What's up, y'all? Mike check is Shantae Arnett. Welcome to a POC POV. I am clocked in and you have officially tuned in. Thank you so much for watching. I am sorry that I'm about three hours late, but I was distracted. Don't ask me with what, it's not y'all business. Just be glad that my homegirl, Anaya Jade Oceans, called me and reminded me that I needed to get my ass down to the job, so here I am. Okay. Like I said, this is a POC POV, and what this is is a discussion series where I, your host, Shantae Arnett, am gonna discuss the black experience, what it is, and my experience and my journey living in it and my perspective, right? So this is gonna be a show where each video, I'm going to take a topic that is specifically re related to the black experience and I'm going to discuss it in as deep of detail as I can, right? So I'm gonna start by explaining to you what my definition of the black experience is, who I am and kind of introduce myself to you guys and then get into why I created this series, the background of the first two episodes that you guys may or may not have seen. If you have seen it, then you know what I'm talking about and I'll elaborate more on those. And if you haven't seen it, I will put the links to those videos in the description box and you can catch up and you will be up to speed. Okay. So I wrote down what my personal definition of the black experience is so that I felt like I had a proper definition to articulate it to non-black people because I couldn't find one that really said what I needed it to say, not even in Urban Dictionary. When you look up the black experience, you don't actually find definitions. You just kind of find articles and videos. So in my personal opinion, the black experience is the culmination of cultural shifts and systematic and situational circumstances that are exclusive to black people, specifically African Americans, that result in a shared understanding throughout the majority of African Americans of what it means to be black in America. Okay? In short, what that means is a culmination of experiences shared by the majority of African-American people, both good and bad, that culminate in the overall understanding of what it means to be an African-American or black in America. OK. With that comes good examples and bad examples. We'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to introduce myself properly because when I came on the scene in my first two videos, I really didn't get into who I am. I just really, well, I set it off in the first episode and then I kind of came back and explained why I set it off in the second episode. So in this video, I'm going to take a step back, introduce myself and talk to you about what you can expect from this series, how it became a series, what the inspiration for the first two episodes were and how we're going to go on moving forward. Okay, like I told you before, I'm your host, Shantae Arnett, and I'm a rapper, I'm a drag queen, which is a combination of queen and king. And if you look up Urban Dictionary, they will tell you that it is a transgendered, non-gendered, or ambiguously gendered monarch. Um, that is how I define myself because I am non-binary, genderqueer, trans femme. Pronouns, they, them, their. Um, we'll dive deeper into those things in my, in my Queer View series, which is going to be the sister series to a POC POV where I explain the queer experience and my perspectives and journeys within that community. Um, okay. So now that you guys have a little bit about who I am, um, I'm going to explain how the first two episodes came about and how those two episodes developed into this series. I was on Facebook a few days ago and I came across a post where somebody was, a white person, sorry, I had to clarify. A white person was describing himself as a side nigga in a meme. He posted a meme and the, and the caption, and the meme was about you know, um, having a person on the side, right? And the meme was about, you know, 
having a person on the side and his caption was, I'm the side nigga, right? So I immediately launch into, I don't personally call it an attack, but the case can be made and it would be justified if it was called an attack because at this point in the game, 2019 going into 2020, I don't feel that there's any excuse or any rhyme or reason that white people should be using that word. And in the grand scheme, I don't understand why black people are using that word in spaces where white people can take it, use it, and then justify it with black examples. We'll get into that. So I launch into the comments and I kind of go off, right? And immediately the excuses go from not, well, you know what? The person immediately started weaponizing the word and then calling me that. Okay. Then at some point, the defense came in and there were people coming in and giving reasons why using that word is okay. Reasons like, it wasn't used to attack anyone. We grew up around all black people. They told us it was okay. Put a pin in that. So with that being said, it immediately, it immediately, enacted a visceral reaction that caused me to pull out my tripod, turn on my camera, and record a video for YouTube where I put a very point blank direct statement out that using, <clears throat> excuse me, the N word is wrong on any level, in any context, in any space, by non-black people, it is wrong, okay? Then I gave black people a little piece and I told them stop opening up the door for them to use it and then use you as an example of why it's okay, okay? Which leads to the second episode. My first episode was the curse out on Caucasian people, hopefully to be heard around the world with a call to action for black people. My second episode was a calling in of black people to try and have the conversation that we need to take responsibility for selling the word nigga back to white people because Using it in music and other circumstances, but music is the real general sense that I'm going for right now. It has led us to be in a position where white people are using and weaponizing the word, not just using as in singing it in a lyric, but weaponizing it and saying it in their own free will and in various forms of context and using us as examples, right? So I tried to call white, uh, call black people in and tell us, because I'm a rapper, I'm also black, so I'm speaking for all of us. I want all of us to stop giving white people a reason to, to justify saying the word, right? Now, in those videos, I have gotten an extreme response from a lot of different people asking me to go deeper. And also I've gotten, those response from people asking me to go deeper have mostly come from black people. Right. They're asking me to go deeper. They're asking me to say more, speak on this, speak on that. And then I've gotten responses from white people asking questions. 
Why is this okay? Why is that okay? Why is it okay to say this? Is it okay to say this here? What, well, what if somebody said this? Well, what if this person told me this? And so it made me want to expand the conversation in the public forum that I started it. And so I came up with the idea to do this series of POC POV where I take the black experience and what it means to be black in America, break it down into specific topics and video by bit video by video break down the questions that I've been asked and the things that we as black people need you to know. Because I think the time for the excuse being given of I don't know is up. I think that it's time that we explain to you exactly what it is to be black in America, even though we've traced that and there are examples, you can look it up all of these things, but I'm giving, I'm throwing my hat in the ring and I'm going to do my part to explain what it is to be black in America from my own opinion so that going forward, the exam, the excuse of I don't know can be just that much further diminished because my philosophy for my activism is eliminating cultural ignorance. ECI, you'll, you'll probably hear me hashtag it, you'll, you'll, you'll hear me say it a lot. ECI, 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 eliminate cultural ignorance. And what that means is my mission is not to change people's minds. It's not to go and by the end of every conversation that I have with a white person, have them have this Oprah aha moment and this and this epiphany of awakening that they're no longer racist or have these thoughts or completely understand the mind of black people. That's not necessarily the goal, but what I am going for is that going forward, after seeing this video, after having the conversations with me, after, you know, these, these types of things, these type of efforts that I'm making, White people can no longer go forward saying that they don't know or that they don't understand or that they don't have the context. I'm putting it out there on video. I've put it out there in black and white so that we can eliminate the cultural ignorance that is associated with black people. So, the black experience. There are good examples, there are bad examples of that, right? And I wanted to, before I got out of here, talk about what some good examples of the black experience are and what some bad examples of the black experience are, right? And a lot of the times, there's a lot of examples that can play on both ends where on the front end, it looks like a great example of black culture or the black experience. But with that comes negative undertones or negative experiences that can go along with that. And yes, with good comes bad, but I want to completely see if I can explain it in far enough depth that the least amount of questions that we have to ask, the better. So, okay, I'm just gonna go for some basic examples and that I'm gonna call to action. Good examples of the black experience. Us doing the electric slide at family functions, right? Us doing the cha-cha slide at the wedding reception, at the family reunion, to the cookout for 4th of July, all of those things. Us doing the family dances in the 4th of July, is that in the 3rd? Black experience, right? Um, bad experience or a bad example of the black experience. Being pulled over and... not even being pulled over, 
seeing a police officer pull behind you in traffic and instinctually having a feeling of panic. Not just because, you know, oh, did I, oh, am I speeding? Oh, you know, whatever. But an immediate panic thinking towards, is my life in danger? And what is going to come of this incident? Am I going to come from this incident? Bad experience of, or bad example of the black experience, right? Good example of the black experience. Um, good example of the black experience. There is there is an energy amongst black people in a general sense, and I'm not speaking for all black people, but in a general sense, there's an energy amongst black people. When we enter a room, there are certain nuances and certain actions that can be taken to automatically make us feel comfortable and familiar with each other, right? Things like if we're in a room and let's see. If we're in a room, you know what? This is about to play into those examples of good on the front end, bad on the back end. This is what I was talking about. We're in a room of people, right? And we may or may not be some of the only black people in the room. We can nod to each other and automatically feel comfortable that we're <laughs> as funky Dineva would say, black like this and not like this. Um, and that we can approach each other and that there is an understanding that we are safe amongst each other and that we are understood to each other. The bad part of that is that we have to do that. The bad part is, is that the reason why we do that to other black people in a room is because we want to establish some system of numbers to feel safe with each other. Because we don't want to be the only black person in a room because we don't want to be targeted. Right? Another example of that, which is front it which is a front end compliment, but back end black shade, you speak so well. You're so articulate. What do you mean? I'm sorry. Now, drop down in my comments and correct me if I'm wrong, but I've never, ever heard somebody address a white person and say, wow, you speak so well. You're so articulate. I don't know if white people understand how offensive that is because I genuinely want to believe that you're giving us a compliment, right? But what about your initial impression of me would make you believe that I am not articulate? Is it because I am black and that automatically associates me with hip hop music and urban colloquialism that you think of me as dumbed down or not able to hold conversation in educated circumstances? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, That's one of those instances where it's a compliment on the front end, but it's also very disrespectful. 
that is genuinely predicated to the black experience. That is genuinely associated with being black. Um, so situations like that, this series is going to dive in deep on that level. And I'm going to talk about a lot of different things when it comes to being black and what the black experience is. And I also wanna hear from you guys and I want to know what are some experiences being black you want me to talk about? White people, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them. This is not an exclusionary space for you. In fact, I want white people to watch this video so they can learn. Because I believe that a lot of white people want to know and just don't know how to ask. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of white people just don't know because they don't have the experience, the experiences that allow them to have that frame of thinking. You know what I'm saying? If you've never had to look at something a certain way, you're not gonna look at it in that way until it's brought to your attention. You know what I'm saying? These videos are gonna be a teaching moment and they're gonna be teaching tools and they're also going to be a way for black people to come together and to bond over our experience, as well as gain a feeling of understanding from other Black people who may or may not have people to talk to. So I want you guys to drop down in my comments. I want you to hit me up on social media, at Shantae Arnett. I'm just at Shantae Arnett on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all that. Cash App. Venmo, PayPal, at Shantae Arnett. S-H-A-W-N-T-A-E-A-R-N-E-T-T-E. I want you to go to my comments and my inboxes and I want you to give me suggestions of videos to talk about, things within the black experience that you want me to talk about. Um, I want you to ask me questions for all the non-black people, ask me questions. What do you want to know about the black experience? What do you want to know about black people to help you be possibly less ignorant in a situation um, or to just be aware and so that you can feel connected to the black people in your community? Because I feel like there are also a lot of white people who don't have issues with black people and who aren't in, and who aren't racist, but they just don't know how to approach us. They don't know how to handle us. They don't know how to approach us. And they almost walk on eggshells because we are a sensitive race because we're made to be sensitive and with do right. And it's not necessarily sensitive, but we're just hyper aware because... For every white person that is, you know, not racist and just sensitive to the people and just, you know, doesn't know, there are 500, well, 500 white people who are just blatantly fucking racist. And both of those people need to be addressed. The people who are just blatantly racist and the people who are just white and don't know. So this is for y'all too. This is for all five hundred shades. Sorry. This is for all 500 shades covered under Rihanna's Fenty Foundation and beyond. Drop down in the comments so we can have this conversation together so that we can join hands and educate these white folks and non-black folks together about our experiences in this country and why you all need to understand. Yeah, get at me. Um, I'm planning on doing this on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. 
I'm planning on doing a POC POV Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But my inbox and my uh, comment section is open at any time. So get at me. I can't wait to talk to y'all some more. Um, so with that being said, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. I'm getting ready to go ahead and go on my break. I know I was late to work today, but, you know, it's time for my break and y'all ain't the boss of me. So get down in them comments. I'll see y'all later. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. All those things that YouTubers say. Um, be on the lookout for a PLC POV Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays right here at Shantae Arnett on YouTube. Be on the lookout for In My Queer View, which will be on Tuesday, Thursdays, and maybe Saturdays. We'll see. Um, I may be starting that next week instead of this week because this is the week of Thanksgiving, but I am doing a PLC POV all this week. So get at me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, once again, like, share, subscribe, all those things the YouTubers say. I'll holler at y'all when I clock back in from my break. Peace. Don't drop my child. I'm trying to walk off all cute in the video and stuff. Bye.